Hey, how's it going, Changepoint Kotzebue? No matter where you guys are logging in from, I just want to say hello. If you're in Anchorage, if you're at Changepoint Marshall, if you're up in Barrow, any of the villages, no matter where you guys are at, I'm so thankful that you're here today with us um, for our weekly Sunday online sermon. My name is Peach, and I'll be getting to share the message with you guys today. And yeah, that's really about it. Today is Halloween and we got a good amount of snow here in Kotzebue, so it's really shaping up to be a super awesome winter. My daughter, Atlee, is going to be a little ice cream cone today and I'm so excited to let you guys see pictures of her online and stuff. She's going to be the cutest little ice cream cone you've ever seen. Anyway, yeah, so that's it. We're going to go ahead and just get started, um, jump right into our message today. But before we do, I'd like to, um, you know, if you're just now signing in, I'd like to welcome you guys to, to our Sunday online service. And I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer. So let's do that. <sighs> Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this amazing day. Thank you for the snow. Thank you for the ice that's forming. Thank you for just everything that you're doing during this time of year outside. I just totally love it, God. And uh, thank you for our family. Thank you for our friends. And um, thank you for what you're doing inside each of our lives, Lord. And I pray that today that your Holy Spirit speak to each and every one of us, that we can learn more about you, that we can see how to experience you, that we can learn how to experience you, and that we don't miss the opportunities for us to experience you, God. And I thank you for that, and I pray that your words be my words, that your thoughts be my thoughts, and that I can glorify you with, uh, with this message that we're going to have today, God, and that we can share together as a family, even though we're online. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool. Nice to see you guys today. So we are going to be reading in Ephesians. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Ephesians. If you've been following us for the last couple of weeks, we've been in this Experiencing God series. Now, Experiencing God is a book by Henry Blackaby. I'm kind of looking for it, but I don't see it anywhere nearby. But it's a book by Henry Blackaby, and it's one of the top five books in my life and in Lance's life and probably in Scott Mariner's life, which have really made a difference um, for how we experience God, for how we see God. So I highly encourage you, if you guys want, go online, go to Amazon or go to Barnes & Noble if you're in Anchorage, wherever you go. Go somewhere and look for the book Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby, and and I would highly encourage you guys to read it. Give it a read through. It is life changing. It's super awesome. You guys won't regret it. Uh, also, you can go to our Change Point app, and there's uh, Experiencing God devotional on there. There's notes from previous sermons. You can watch the previous sermons. There's uh, outlines for small group studies if you guys want to do that. There's all kinds of like Experiencing God stuff on the app. So I encourage you guys, ChangePoint app, you can go there and check out all the stuff we've done before. But if you've been following us, we've had a great series so far. We've learned about an overview of experiencing God. We've learned uh, how to hear his voice. We've learned how to work with God, how to see like where he's at and just come alongside of him the way that we've um, he asks us to. We've learned that experiencing God requires obedience. It requires change. And last week, we started more of like the the daily practical stuff of what experiencing God can look like. And this week, or last week anyway, we talked about experiencing God in our marriage or in our relationships, even if you're single, experiencing God in being single. But last week, we really talked about marriage exclusively, how we can experience God with our husband and wife and how we can come alongside God and what he's doing in our spouse's life and how we can not only encourage that, but actually be an active part of helping um, our partner grow, right? And so if you guys weren't here for that, I super highly encourage you guys to go back to last week's message and listen to it. You can listen to me, you can listen to Scott Mariner, you can listen to any of our other uh, campuses across Alaska, but yeah, definitely don't miss last week. And today, we're actually going to be skipping ahead just a little bit because we are going to be talking about experiencing God in our church. Now... God wants you 
to experience him in every part of your life, right? No matter what it is, there's opportunities for you to experience him. But today we're focusing on experiencing God in church. Now you might be wondering what I mean by church because a lot of us know that like there is the global church. There is the the church, the body of believers who are all united in Christ as brothers and sisters across local, international, no, no borders, just around the world. Um, that is the church. That is the body of Christ. But that's not the church that we're talking about today. Today we are talking about your local church, um, your local church and the people who are in it, right? So if you're watching this, um, if you're in Kotzebue, your local church presumably is going to be Change Point Kotzebue. If you're watching this in Marshall, Change Point Marshall. If you're in Tekatnu and you're watching this one, you probably go to Change Point Tekatnu too. Anyway, we're just talking about your local church and experiencing God in that local church. Now, it's important to have an understanding of like what the church is for. Because if we want to really know like how God is going to work in the church and how God is going to work in us in the church, we got to have like an understanding of God's game plan a little bit. Like why, why church? Why church? And the church is designed to strengthen believers and help them continue to grow in your relationship with him and with each other. And it's his primary method of, of bringing the kingdom of God on earth, of bringing the kingdom of God to those who don't know God. The, the church is here to help us learn, to help us grow, to rejuvenate us, to equip us. It helps, um, it helps draw us to, uh, if, it helps us learn about conviction. It helps draw us to repentance. And in the end, the church is just, uh, it's what, it's the body of Christ. We're all a part of it. We're all in there. And the church is important in how God brings about his kingdom on earth. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about how do we experience God inside this church today. And so go ahead and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. We're in Ephesians chapter 4 starting in verse 7. So I'll give you guys a second to grab your Bibles. Um, if you don't have them, take this time to go grab it. Pretty much you can, if you guys want to, you can bring it with you every time we do these online messages because we're always in them all the time. Totally love this thing, the Bible, that is. Okay, this is what it says. We're going to read Ephesians 4, 7 through 16. So it says, Grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. Now listen to this. It says, He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine and human cunning or by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every jo joint with which it is equipped." When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And so that's what we're talking about today, experiencing God in our church. And I, I'm, I'm really just going to cover four different ways that we experience God in church. And two of these ways are ways that like pastors generally like don't enjoy talking about too much because it seems weird for some reason and the other two are more of the fun ways even though that's like not a good way to, <laughs> to look at it but that's what we're going to talk about anyway and so way number one that we can experience God in our church is through the act of serving our church 
Now, again, this is one of those things that like pastors tend to not really enjoy talking about serving and we don't really enjoy, enjoy to talk about like giving or tithe because it seems like uh, needy for some reason or like just just people don't enjoy to hear that like you should serve or you should give. And guess what? We're going to talk about both those things today. Uh, but the primary uh, reason for this message isn't to get your guys' money and to get you guys to like help us. It's to help you guys have this experience with God. And so when it comes to serving, I think it's important for us to understand um, what God is doing in the overall church and what God is doing in your specific, specific local church. Because if we don't understand what God is doing then it's going to be hard for us to like get on board with with taking our spare time and using it to like help the church. But as we said earlier, the church is God's primary method of bringing his kingdom down on earth. And now he does that through uh through using the church to grow his body of believers, to equip them for what he's asking them to do. And he does that through fellowship. He does that through preaching. He does that through teaching and small groups and worship. He does all of these things for us to grow closer to him um, in our relationship with him alone, but also corporately. And then he, he draws people from the church and into ministry. Now, your life is ministry. Whether you know it or not, you if you are a believer in Christ, you are a minister and you are carrying the ministry and message of reconciliation. Now, you may not be saying anything to anybody. You may not be going out and like purposely seeing your life as a mission field. But believe it or not, that is exactly what your life is. And you are in the ministry. And so church is a way for us to bring, to equip you for the ministry of life and to send you out with everything that you need, not to bring people into the church, but to bring God from the church to the people who don't know him. And that's what church does. Now, it might be important for you guys to have an understanding of like, what is your local church doing? What are the things that, that they need help with? What are the things that they're thriving in? What are the things that they're, they're seeing outreach or wanting to do outreach towards? And, and when it comes to the church, the church is ran by a couple people or a group of people, elders or pastors or whoever it is, who are dedicating their life to following the Lord, to having a relationship with him and to not only hearing, but seeing and doing the work of God, to seeing where God is working, to hearing his, his call to join him and then by actually joining him in it. But we're going to talk about Cotsview, uh, Change Point Cotsview specifically because that's like our local church, right? So right now we really have me and Lance who are um, doing the preaching and teaching and, and coming up with like the plans and whatnot. And so when it comes to that, we spend our time in prayer. We spend our time looking at what's going on around us and we spend our time seeing what God is doing and we try to... Um, join as a church in those things and we are doing uh, we are doing a lot of um, good things you know uh, COVID has kind of slowed some stuff down but the deal is like even if COVID wasn't a thing if we were on like a no if COVID never happened we never had masks we never had mandates we never had any of these things the problem is that there's still like the two of us plus like Karina and Savannah like there, there's, there's people who are helping, but we can't do absolutely everything, right? And the body was made in such a way that there are people inside of the church who can pick up where the other people can't. Where there's slack, there's somebody who's able to fit in there and pick up the slack. And the, the body, the church, works like a well-oiled machine, or where it should. We all have different gifts. We all have different talents. We all have different abilities. We have, we have passions that God has put on our lives. We have desires to see thing, different things happen. And God didn't put those in you by accident. He didn't put you in there. Uh, he didn't put you in that position just so like you could flaunt that you can like sing really good or that you can do this or you can do that. 
Your gifts, your talents, your abilities are used to glorify God and help expand his kingdom. And one of the best ways to do that is through serving your local church. Um, now, this isn't a cry for you guys to like sign up on our registry list to like come serve us and help. No, that's not what I'm trying to get you to do. When we use our gifts, when we use the talents and abilities that God has given us, we are putting ourselves in a position where we can experience God through the very things that he has blessed us with. He has blessed us with the ability to uh, to serve, with the ability to give, with the ability for each of these things. And knowing that God is using you in, in something that you enjoy gives you this new experience of like how awesome he is, how much he loves you, and how fun it is to be a believer, right? But you also understand your place in this world as a believer. You're not just a random person. You're not just a nobody in the kingdom of God. You're not just, you're not just like some loner who sits in the back pew or, or any of these things. You are a necessary and needed part of the body. And we're all made different in these different ways. Now look here at what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says this. It says, now there are a variety of gifts. And that's true. There are. There's prophets. There's teachers. There's preachers. There's those who um, heal. There's those who pray in tongues. There's like there's all kinds of spiritual gifts. There's service. There's there's thankfulness. There's all of these things, and we're all made different with these different gifts. Now this is what it says. Okay, so now there are a variety of gifts, but there's the same spirit, and there are a varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everybody. So when we are serving God together, we might be serving him in different ways, but the end goal is still the same. We glorify God and we help expand his kingdom. We love God and we love others. And there is a way for you to do that. And we get to experience the strength of God to carry us through uh, this time of service. We get to experience the love of God. We get to see what God is doing in individuals' lives. And not only that, but we get to be an active part of it. So one of the best ways that we can experience God in the church is through serving. And if you guys do, like we have areas where we could use service. Uh, again, COVID has kind of slowed us down, but it's not going to forever. Um... So look at what your local church is doing. Look at their programs. Look at areas where they need help. And if you have that um, gifting, if you have that ability even, um, I would really consider or really encourage you guys to pray about how you can come along your side your church and help serve them. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is through giving. And like this is the second thing that a lot of people don't like to, to talk about. It's a little uncomfortable. But it's important for us to understand the, the purpose of giving. On a very practical level, your giving helps support the church staff and, um, the, and the functions of the church, right? Keeping the lights on, warming up the building, having the building. <laughs> All of these things are, are things that like giving helps to do. But the reason why we experience God through the act of our giving is because we're allowing ourselves or we're allowing God to become Lord over our money. Money, uh, I'm just going to speak for myself here. Money can really be a stressful, anxious, anxiety-inducing thing in my life. When I don't have money, I'm kind of freaking out. When I do have money, I'm still worried about like, what's going to happen if this or this or this happens. Like, It's something that, that can really... Um, not necessarily control my life, but it can control my actions and it can control how I think about things. And money is really the thing that drives me um, from trusting God and to protect myself through my own like logic, my own actions and thinking. But when we have uh, the opportunity to give to the church or to give to like what our church is doing, whether it be time um, like serving or whether it be financially or even through prayer we but mostly through um, we're talking right now through the financial aspect 
we're putting God as Lord over something that can drive our lack of faith. And it's hard to give that 10% or whatever, whatever you decide when you feel like you really need it. And there's this, uh, there's this very popular teaching that goes over mostly in America called the prosperity gospel. Now what the prosperity gospel teaches is that the more you give, the more God is going to bless you. And eventually you can like give your way into living in a mansion or give your way into having a sports car or any of these things, right? Now I do not agree with that message and I don't agree with the theology of that at all. I think it can be pretty damaging to individuals, but it can also be damaging to how non-believers see the church because we just look like greedy, money-hungry people. That's not what giving is supposed to be. We don't give so that we can receive all these cool things in this life. We give because we believe in what God is doing. We believe in the people that God has put in charge of our church, and we know that through giving financially, we can help support the things that the church is doing, but we can also experience God as, as, as Lord over our anxieties, as Lord over the things that, that really keep us moving, right? We have to have money. But even more than money, we have to have God. And I'm not going to tell you by giving real lots of money, you're going to get, you know, that super cub with tundra tires. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're going to get that new boat or this new house or any of that. But what you will receive is more or a, a new experience, a new understanding of God and a closer relationship with him. So through our church, we can experience God through giving. Now, the third reason or the third thing, the third area, whatever you want to call it, is is really easy. It's through participation. Now, there's a lot of cool things about church, right? We get to we get to talk about, or we get to worship, we get to come in, you have coffee, you have donuts, we have uh, Bible studies, and then, and then we have our, our preaching time, and then afterwards, everyone gathers around. If you come to the Boys and Girls Club and we have it there, we play ping pong, we play pool, we're mopping the floor, you know, we're doing all of these fun things. And it's really important for us as believers to come and just participate in what the church is doing. And why? Well, because the church is here, as we said, to help equip us, to help us grow, to draw us to conviction, to draw, or not to, not to draw us to conviction, but to allow us to be convicted of sins in our life and to draw us to repentance and ultimately is to keep us or to encourage our relationship with God to help it grow and thrive and move on to other people in the outside world. But that's not going to happen if we're not participating in what the church is doing. If we're only coming to our Sunday services and staying on our phones throughout the entire time, we're not really growing much, are we? If we're not being active, if we're not looking for these opportunities to, to, to really press in and draw near to God, then we're going to have a hard time drawing near to God. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Right? Seek me and you will find me. Knock and I will answer. These are all things that can happen through the active participation of our church. And now I'm not talking just about our Sunday service. Now that is an important time to, to participate in what's going in. But look at what your local church does. Here in Cottesville, we have things that we do. We have our Sunday service. Then we also have our lit uh, youth times, which um, are kind of on hold because of COVID. This is all going to go over eventually. But right now, COVID is kind of a bummer. But you can participate with our lit kids by speaking into our youth, by coming in and just being there, being a mentor, being somebody who, who wants to, to help our youth continue to grow. Um, if you're a youth, you can participate by just coming and, and enjoying the time. We also have our, our Kutavik Bible Camp that we hold every year, which is a fantastic opportunity to participate in what the church is doing or to come and as a youth kid and just enjoy camp. But when we participate, we're allowing God, we're opening ourselves up to experience God by allowing him to change us, 
by being vulnerable, by being open to the things that we might learn, the things that we might um, be convicted of, by the by the renewing of our spirit, right? We're opening ourselves up to experiencing God by just taking on what he means the church to be and by allowing ourselves to continue to grow. And the last one is a little bit uh, similar, but also different, and that is through fellowship. We can experience God in the church through um, fellowship with each other. The we... The Christian life was not made to be experienced alone. It's not something that you can... We weren't made to be hermits, right? We weren't made to just go live in a cave like Gollum and hoard all the cool things that we have and speak in a funny voice and then, like, you know, die. That's not what God meant the Christian life to be. We are designed for relationship, we are designed for friendship. We are designed for community. We are designed to be in a relationship with those who are around us. And at our local church can be the closest friends that you've ever had. Now, fellowship really is just a time of coming together, of being with other like-minded Christians and spending intentional time with each other. Now, sometimes that's talking directly about God the entire time, and other times it's just hanging out. You can fellowship at church, drinking your morning coffee with each other. You can fellowship um, at a hot tub, right? You can fellowship uh, watching a sports game. You can fellowship in all these ways, but when we fellowship with each other, we get to see how God is acting in the lives of those who are around us. And really in the lives of those who we're going to be spending an eternity with. I mean, when you go to church and you see the believers to your right and to your left, you are going to be spending the next million, billion years with that person. So why not start to know them now? Why not start to see what God is doing in their lives? And you might see an opportunity to join God in what he's doing in their lives. And there's nothing like seeing God in the real world to sitting at Chili's and, and learning about the Lord, right? Sitting at ch Chili's and being encouraged, being rejuvenated. And have you ever spent time with a believer who just truly loved God? And when you had a moment together just out in the real world, you left that moment wishing that it almost never ended. Or being encouraged to go do that thing that you're afraid to do. Or being willing now to repent of something that you were holding back before. Now fellowship in the church and fellowship with your church community is, is one of the most valuable and yet underrated things that grows our relationship with God specifically. And the Bible doesn't hold back on what he says about church fellowship. He says here, um, think about in Proverbs, it says, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Now, you don't get sharpened as a believer. Your, your, your faith, your theology, your doctrine, all these things don't grow by spending time talking to people who could care less about like this Christian thing, right? Now, I'm not telling you to go out and ignore non-believers. That is far from the point. What I am saying is make intentional time to be with people in church and outside of the church building to fellowship and encourage one another, to be open, to be vulnerable. The Bible also says this. It says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see that day drawing near. Now, it says, don't neglect to meet together. Now, yeah, that does mean in church, right? As a body of believers. But it also means with each other. Take time. Take time to know who your brothers and sisters in Christ are. And spend time getting to know who they are, right? See what they're doing. Be open to being taught be, allow yourself to be humbled by something that somebody younger than you might be able to teach you or something that God teaches you coincidentally through, or not coincidentally, 
but teaches you through somebody who you never thought that you would um, learn from, let alone get along from, right? But God desires to have an experience with you through other people who are in the church, through other believers. Don't neglect to meet together because as we get sharpened, as we continue to have an experience with God, we start to understand how God works. We start to understand how God moves. And we start to learn how to have these um, kind of difficult conversations, how to have this like Christ mind in us when we're with the people who aren't saved, when we're talking to people who don't know God. We're able to, to see God working and come alongside of them. So don't neglect those things. Now, guys, the the bottom line of the scripture of this message today is that God wants to have an experience with you in your church. Now, sadly, COVID has kind of messed up a lot of things. But one of the things that I've noticed is that not for everybody, not for everybody, but for some people, um, COVID has, you've come out of this like COVID time, this quarantine time that we had and kind of fell asleep on church, right? We lose the understanding of how important the church is, or we lose the understanding on what the church is even for. And we find ourselves stagnant or indignant or even just like bored of church. Or we find ourselves like too comfortable to get up and go to church, right? And we think that like, Online is good enough. Now, I know that some people have legit concerns. You have legit health issues, right? You have all, like, you know, I'm not here to, like, come down on anybody. But I am saying is that don't neglect to meet together. And if you're one of those people who have found yourself comfortable with online or comfortable with uh, just the bare minimum, right? I want to encourage you guys to take time to pray and ask God to show you why church and ask God to show you where you fit in, where you belong in the church, how you can help serve, how you can help give, how you can participate and how you can enjoy fellowship with others. And guys, I promise you that through these things, you will continue to grow and to continue to have more experiences of God. But don't neglect God's body. Don't neglect God's mode of bringing his kingdom down to earth through the church. Okay, guys, I want to encourage you guys with that. It's been a great time uh, sharing with you guys today. I'm going to go out and have a good rest of my day enjoying the snow. And yeah, that's it. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.